Sunday the 8th of June the second early potatoes uh, things things aren't looking good you've noticed I've got my hoodie on and my jacket it's not warm today it feels feels like six seven degrees it is not good uh, keep getting lots and lots of rain showers the ground isn't really drying out the plants aren't drying they're sitting here damp in these cold conditions and I just dread that we're going to get blight on these potatoes the other day I noticed yesterday that some of the onions the, uh, the onion sets actually some of them were rotting in the ground the tops had fallen over and the, the bulbs were rotting so I've taken them out hoping that that doesn't spread to the rest of the onions these just break off you can see that that's blight just traveling down along the top of this from the tip of the stem traveling back down the plant um, I've just done these with peroxide I don't think I'll be able to save these because it because they're outside I can't control this environment it rained last night it's rained lightly again this morning so I can't keep these as dry as I can with the tomatoes in the polytunnel so it may be a case of in the next couple of days I may have to harvest all these potatoes and just get them into storage before the blight travels down these stems and, and gets into the potatoes themselves it's kind of all around me here the bed next to it it's the same in these some some people might get sort of uh, confused I know certainly people on the allotment site get confused when they start seeing spots on the potato leaves that's <clears throat> that's quite normal that I had that last year on my own potatoes and you sort of get these spots and these marks when the potatoes are nearing the end of the cycle you know when they're not actively growing and you get these spotty leaves that's not actually blight that's a completely different thing but where the blight comes in is where you see the leaves doing this so the leaves start dying back and then you also get the stems going brown as well like that and these stems are so soft they just break off there's another one you see how the stems gone black and that's that's where the blight has got into the stem there from that leaf joint the other indication of blight is that this happens so fast really really fast it happens within two or three days so it'll generally start at the bottom and within two or three days your plants almost up to the top all the leaves will be hanging down you'll be start to get in these brown patches on the stems and on the leaf stems like this just everywhere that is blight not not just spotty leaves because you can see that that stem is healthy it's just got a spotty leaf and that's just normal die back of that leaf so <coughs> Blight and spotty leaf are two different things. Well, what had the blight hit? It it hit these. There's some leaves here, just crispy. There was a lot going like this, and at the edge of another leaf there, the edge of some down here, some in the centre. These are uh, Ulster Prince. They came in. They started flowering about a week ago, something like that. Um, and that's when the blight got in just after they started flowering now I've been hitting these every 48 hours with the hydrogen peroxide solution and at the moment it seems to have halted it it's stopped the, the blight isn't spreading any further likewise on these ones which are my main crops these are my Maris Pipers um, doing really well for some weird reason there's a there's a growth spurt in the center and they tail off to, to each side of that but yet yeah, these have literally just come into flower in the last three days and again you maybe can't see it from there but we've got blight on the tops here there and everywhere on some of the leaves but once again I've caught these in time with the peroxide and it's hopefully killed the blight and it is not setting on any further I'm very I walk around them for quite a while every morning looking at the stems and the leaves to see if there's any more sort of spread and there hasn't been sort of virus attack there which is on the tip of a leaf it's not spread any further down since it's been sprayed which is really good and hopeful
We'll take one of these King Edwards up because these are looking really sad. We'll see what's under these. I don't think they're going to be very big and I haven't pulled any up yet. Uh, let's take that one there. No, I'm afraid that is rubbish. Really rubbish. That's pretty bad guys for King Edwards. And these potatoes are still another good month off being ready. That's why the tubers are so small. But I'm just going to leave them because if I lose if I lose 12 plants with potatoes that big, I'm certainly not bothered at all. Um, it's no great loss. This is why I'm nursing my main crops, the two beds of Maris Piper and the Ulster Prince. I'm really nursing them. I'm looking after them because I've got all my hopes on them. I've also got 15 potato buckets at home, which are absolutely thriving at home because it's not as wet as it is out here. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, from those 30 potatoes, I hope we'll get a nice, decent crop off them. But no, that is, that is really bad for King Edward. Let's leave them in. Let's see if I can do any better. If I, when I come back on the potato video, we'll see if the uh, harvest has improved any. And that, guys, is the this year so far, this devastating blight attack. Uh, that's what's happened to my spuds. You see how happy they look compared to these.